listeners to the first episode of the Tetare Show. I am your host for this episode, Isha Danella, and the crew members here are Avinash. Hi guys. <laughs> and Dun. Hello. And G. Hello. All right. So for today's episode, I think it's an episode that's pretty relatable to students uh, in schools and universities out here right now. And the, the topic is online learning. So before we enter our conversation, I would like to give some insights about how the concept of online learning started here in Malaysia. So back in early this year, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit Malaysia, edu- the education sector in Malaysia was forced to shut down schools and universities and advise students to go home in order to help curb the spread of COVID-19. And because of this, the concept of online learning was introduced to us so that we can continue our, our semester and not put our studies on hold. And now we enter our first question, which is, what do you love about online learning? Let's head over to Avinash. Okay, so to be very frank, uh, online learning isn't, I, w- I wouldn't say it's something that's new to me because I've been doing it for a very long time. Just that uh, in the old days when we had physically classes, I was never physically present there. I'm pretty sure my friends felt my aura there, like, but I was never actually there. You know, <laughs> in front of the actress, the keynote, so I was never there. So the thing being, right, I always used to do this thing where, okay, maybe after a lecture, I'll maybe go to the lecture slide, you know, type out what's the topic about, then I'll go to YouTube and I'll actually, you know, learn from YouTube. So it's, yeah. for me, it's, I would put it in a way that I love it because it's never changed anything that I've done, just that I'm doing whatever I've been doing for the past, you know, how, how many semesters are we in? Three, right? Yeah. yeah. So for the past three, yeah, for the past three semesters, compared to semester one, I'm just doing this legally. That's all. <laughs> like, so I, I honestly love that part. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's the way to put it. All right, moving on to Edwin. What do you love about online classes? Um, I think the thing I love the most about online classes is the increased flexibility. So if we had to have a face-to-face class, we'd have class at 8 a.m., and th- which means that I have to wake up around 6 a.m., and by the time I arrive to class, I would be too sleepy. Right now with online learning, I could just pre, I could just watch the pre-recorded video of the 8 a.m. class and do it anytime I would, I'd want. And in addition to that, I'd also save money having f- online learning. So instead of going to campus and spending my money on fuel, I could just use that fuel money that I'd, I have spare to buy more food or other stuff I'd like. Right, right. All right. So, G, what do you think about online learning? Uh, sorry, what do you love about online learning? Uh, for me, personally, I like uh, online classes because uh, I don't need to wake up early for my classes. If it's an 8 a.m. class, I just need to wake up around like 10 minutes before the class. Oh. And, I, <laughs> and I don't need to, um, how to say, uh, put in too much uh, effort. In how you look. In how I look, yeah, in how I look. Or, <laughs> or get ready before the class, you know. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to actually uh, wake up before your class, get ready, you know, take the bus, go to yeah. the class. Yeah, so I think... That's the best part of online classes. All right, understood. So, now that we've talked about why you guys like online classes, what do you guys not like about online classes? How about we start with G? Right, uh, things I don't like about online classes. That's actually a lot of things I don't like about online classes. (laughs) Uh, first thing uh, is that uh, I don't actually understand a lot of things that the lecturer uh, mm. teaches. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing that they teach us in physical class, but then we cannot uh, actually um, ask them questions all the time. You know, like physical class, yeah. you can just go and meet them and ask questions yeah, you know, yeah, face-to-face. Definitely. And when, when we are online, it's a bit hard because we need to uh, email them or message them and we need to wait for the reply. And mm. we understand that they are also busy uh, yeah. at home. And the second thing that I don't like is uh, there's just way too many assignments. Too many All assignments. Right. And, uh, I think it takes up too much time uh, trying to finish the assignment. And we don't need, actually have enough time to study and understand yeah. the material. So yeah, that's okay. two things I don't like about online classes. All right. Now that we've heard G's part, how about we move on to Avinash? 
Yeah, I think I'd have to agree on G on you know the assignments part lah. Like. So yeah, so for assignments, right? Uh, because the way that we do things have already changed, in a sense that uh, we used to be physical, now we are all uh, 100% virtual. The way our assignments are carried is a lot of things are very cheaper. Like for instance, all of us know that every every single week we have trouble finishing our lab, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Can so agree. the thing being, Thanks like so your lab sessions are only supposed to be what three hours a week, yeah, at max. Yeah. Yes. And we finish our lab report in the session, and we yeah. submit it before we go back. So we only spend a total of, I would say, what three hours, lah. Three hours yeah. on the particular lab, but you know because of online learning, we now have to run a simulation, and uh, we we sometimes don't get assistance, which yeah. is very painful in the sense that it takes a lot of time, and mm. instead of having to spend what, a uh, three hours on a lab, we actually spend, what eight, nine, ten, sometimes maybe half a, a lot day. of hours. Yeah, so it's a lot of hours. So in the sense that the whole uh, it actually even yeah, if we have more true. time, but there are few things that you know take up our time that we have. Mm. That's okay. just among one of the entire long list that I have lah. Like, I think maybe we'll move into. You know, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edwin. <laughs> Let's hear what you think about uh, what do you, what do you not like about online classes. Uh, so I I completely agree with what Avinash had to say about our about the laboratory. For a three, for a one credit hour course that usually takes three hours to complete <coughs> in a face to face environment, it would take us it would take us an entire week to complete. And if we're unlucky, we might not even get like what he said assistance. So we're completely blind on what we're doing, and we don't know if the res- the le- reports we handed in was right or wrong. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like the thing that I hate the, mo- the most about online classes is when they conduct quizzes or tests they give us a certain period of time and they expect us to upload our files in that time period without extending yeah. that's right the problem with that is some people don't have the proper scanners or fast internet or the environment right. to actually upload their work yeah, yeah. so Yeah, that's right. I agree with all your points. I feel like there's a lot of uh, variables that go on when it comes to like completing online classes. We might be a little luckier than others, and that's just that's just how it is. So, the next question: Are you guys ready? <laughs> like a like a quiz show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. So, how do you think the education sector in Malaysia right now is responding to COVID nineteen? Uh, let's start with Avinash. Oh God, this is this is a tough one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta have okay. your current issues in check. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, how is the education sector responding? Um, in a sense that, for me, I believe that we are doing quite a poor job. But I do not blame I do not blame anyone in this sense. Yeah. Because I strongly believe that if we change the way that we do things, like I mentioned earlier, situations have changed. We cannot do things the same way that we have been doing for the yeah, past yeah. what, nineteen, twenty years. And I'm pretty sure you guys have actually seen this, uh, like it's not to say a meme lah. This like graphic infographic where it says that you know you see cars, uh, phones have changed drastically throughout the past hundred years, where our education system has yeah. not changed one bit. From day one, we started doing this. So, I strongly believe that because we are doing things so conventional, it's very, it's like it's very hard for us to actually adapt. And one more thing, we also need a properly trained workforce. Like, like you know, the health sector, we have uh, mm. properly trained staff to actually, uh, you know, help the curb this pandemic. And we also need properly trained people to actually help us. And assist, or in the sense that assist us with our online learning. So my my really my actually in general, the education system, the tech sector is could do a better job. Yeah, yeah. Like there is a lot of things that we can do. It's just that it it has been responding very slowly. Like I'm pretty sure a lot of students were actually affected when we were supposed to come back, where somewhere in October to our physical mm-hmm. and then our physical classes. Isha, you from Sarawak, right? So I'm yeah. pretty sure you actually faced that. 
So yeah, right. yeah there, there was a lot of last minute decisions taken because uh, another thing that I've also learned about COVID-19 is things can change in a snap. Like during our Minggu Mesra Mahasiswa or our orientation week as we call it in UKM, right? Um, like everything changed in a matter of hours. Not, yeah. not that fast to minutes. Yeah, lah, but yeah, that's true. But uh, when I'm pretty sure a lot of people know that the health, I mean, no, the... I think the what the religious I can't remember what the minister's name like the guy came down to UKM next day we heard he had COVID that yeah. night all of activities got cancelled so yeah. that's how fast things move and because things are moving so fast I if we want to be on top of the game we should move even faster mm. so I would say um, that's pretty much it let's maybe hand it down to G. Okay, so I think that our education uh, sector uh, responded very poorly to the to COVID. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat like, it. It's, uh, straight to it's the been, point. It's been really hard for us students. Yeah. Um, when it actually started, it was so like a uh, sudden. So we, mm. we just packed our things. We just uh, packed our essentials actually. We just left all our things in the university and went back home um, for those who are actually living nearby. If you're actually far away, then you were stuck in university. Right, yeah, Isha? Right. Yeah, that's right. And then... Yeah, uh, I have a friend who's in Sabah, you know? Yeah. He has stuck, went back from oh, March. Oh. Really? So he's in university? Yeah, he's, he's in KKM. Oh. Wow, tough guy. Oh. See, that's what I mean. Um, I think... They could have done a better job, but I don't blame anyone because it's uh, it was all very sudden, mm. abrupt changes. So uh, yeah, like uh, the, minis- uh, the ministry and uh, the university uh, weren't ready for to face this uh, pandemic. Yeah, that's right. I don't think anyone was actually ready. Yeah, so, <laughs> a lot has changed. Yeah, a lot has changed. So like. Uh, Okay, I don't know what to say anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I understand. But yeah, it's just it's just it's just, it's just it's just very uh, poorly managed. Uh, we can also actually see uh, our school school education system, mm. uh, primary and uh, secondary school. Actually, the uh, education just stopped, just halted throughout the year. Mm. They cancelled PT three. They cancelled UPSR. They uh, postponed like, SPM. Postponed SPM. Uh, so. I think they did a very poor job, but I, I hope they can do better after this. Lah. Right, right. So Edwin, since you're an international student, how do you think Malaysia's education sector has been responding to this pandemic? I feel like they've they failed me, especially with the university, uh, who's sometimes unhelpful at times, especially when registering courses. Yeah. So for an international student, I don't know why, but I have troubles in in applying for courses every Saturday semester. And usually before COVID-19 hits, I would be able to go to the dean's office and speak towards the person in charge directly and confront them. Why, why is the system failing me? But mm. because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I wasn't able to do that. And I could only email them and call them. But as... As I've experienced, they've never replied back to my email and nor pick up my calls. So it's quite disappointing. I also don't agree with um, the education ministry because if everyone can work, like adults, adults and older people could go to work, and those people are the people within the age group with high risk, why can't they go to work while we students who are much younger than them with lower risk are not able to go back to universities. So I don't see the point in extending online learning o- until the COVID-19 pandemic slows down, if it slows down at all. <laughs> Understood. I, I feel like the education sector is they're just, it's just trial and error these days. It's a very unpredicted uh, pandemic and it just they're trying to do what they think is best and we might have different opinions. So, in respect to that, if you were the education sector, <laughs> if you were part of the education sector that can 
make the rules, uh, do, make choices for the students. What would you do different or what can you do better in order to uh, make the transition into online learning easier overall? Let's ask Avinash. <laughs> Again, first, again. Again. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, so uh, okay. So, what I would do is I would go, I would on, I will take my car, I will go down to Clang, I will find G, and I will say, "You want to be education minister? <laughs> Come on, you can do it." Okay, uh, this, 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 this is a bad joke, lah. Okay, so as uh, okay, so let's say we are the education minister, uh, what would we do? Uh, actually, in the Oh, like, well, like, you know, uh, before this semester started, I wouldn't have actually mind to let students come back to university. Yeah. Because um, I'm in university for anyone's, or for anyone's information, I'm still in UKM. And the thing being, the, I mean, the thing that is the hardest for us to deal with right now is our inability to actually go out and get our daily essentials. So, there is a good thing to what the education ministry did and there is a bad thing to what the education ministry did. Because if, let's say, um, I let them come back to university, what, what, okay, example, if something happened, who is responsible? So, yeah. like, I think G also kind of touched the surface on this. Like, they're not doing a good job and all that. But whatever decision we take, we have to be held responsible for what we do. So if let's say something bad happens, that's uh, that responsibility falls on our head and we have to bear the consequences. And right now, a lot of people do not want to bear the consequence of a bad decision. Because, yeah. but if, if, if you think about it, right, we have, uh, we will actually have like two sides. So we have decision A and decision B. So even if we choose one decision, we will never know how the other decision, you know, played out. So... Mm. Um, for me, it would be just going for whatever that I feel that, if let's say I was in the position, it's just going to be hands down, whatever I felt that was the best. But I still believe that we could have brought back the students. But um, the thing being, because in Slango, our cases are rising. Yeah. Uh, quite an unprecedented way, to be very honest. So the thing is, <coughs> I find it very hard for us to go out to get things and all that. So just imagine, yeah, yeah. they're trying to control like an entire what a uh, few thousand like maybe what six to seven eight thousand people in university from not going out yeah, first of right. all we need to supply we need to be able to supply the necessary things for them that's, that's the first right. thing secondly all of us are UKM students you know how bad the UKM Wi-Fi is yeah <laughs> even, even though uh, they did the upgrade like a few what, a few days ago right I mean no sorry a few, yeah, a few week. weeks ago yeah a week yeah. ago like that it's still very unstable and I wouldn't be able to imagine if there were like what a lot of students in our rooms and we were, you know, trying to go with online learning because a lot of courses have already taken the liberty of making entire semester, this semester, 100% online. There's only certain courses that allow uh, students to come back. Like FCAP, FCAP allows us to go back. Uh, make, medical in, university. Beginning, beginning, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it always comes down to just, you know, who is going to be held responsible if something happens. Right, that's right. All right, so, G, if yeah. you were the education minister, if Abi was to go to your house and be like, G, you are the next education minister, <laughs> what, what will you do better? Or what would you be doing differently? Um, differently. Don't let me down, G. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be honest, I don't really have any ideas because... Uh, like I said, it's very sudden, sudden changes, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, when they said that we can go back to university for our uh, third semester, mm. they should have just let us um, be in campus and not like uh, actually <coughs> change it, change the yeah. decision on that day itself, you know, because yeah, a lot right. of the students actually went back already and yeah. half, like almost all of them were already on their way back. And mm. that's yep. sudden sudden announcement that they said, oh, you cannot come back to university. Uh, you need to have another semester online. It was mm. very sudden, I think, like, very abrupt, and uh, it actually affected a lot of people. So mm. if I were to be the minister, I would have just uh, let them stay in campus, but in a controlled environment, like how UK is right now. Uh, you can't right. go out, right, Avi? 
Yep. I will so, stuck in my room. <laughs> yeah, if they were stuck in, like in campus, I would actually um, get them, uh, get the university to actually uh, supply them with the, uh, you know, the daily supplies like food, mm. uh, toiletries. Yeah. And if they so. want uh, like any, how to say, uh, data for for the online classes because yeah, like Avi right. said UK Wi-Fi is not so stable. Right, right. And I, I think most universities don't have stable Wi-Fi. I think so. Um, I, I think so. Yeah. Most so, public universities. So uh, actually, um, there is one good thing actually that uh, the ministry did. There was the YES 4G thing. Yes. So they, right, 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 right. They, gave, yeah, yeah. they gave away the free SIM cards. And the, free the free phones. Phone yeah, the free phones. Yeah. So I think, uh, okay, that's Just a play one. Phone phone oh, like. there it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's, wow. That Crowd is owner. Actually, one good thing that they actually did. Yeah, I take back, take back my uh, comment just now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, there are a few good things that they did. Also, uh, UKM also actually uh, supplied food for a mm. few weeks, right, Abi? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, so not only food, there was a lot of um, like help services. Like mm. we had free masks. To be honest, very very unnecessary, but we had a lot of masks. I have like what three three reusable masks with me. And then sometimes they send in food supplies, but they've already kind of stopped it for I'm not sure what reason, but that's basically what help we get, Okay. Yeah. So also, I would actually give them like uh, financial help. For those who are stuck in campus. Yeah, yes. Which, which is agreeing. Which they actually did I wonder the, why. in semester two. Yeah. I think it was 200 rupees, right? 200, but I don't think that was actually yeah. enough. So I, I would add more. Maybe 500 would be okay. Right, Avi? Oh. You have a very big budget. Yeah, so that's the things that I would change. All right, thank you, G. So, Edwin, if you were by some miracle to become the education minister of Malaysia, <laughs> first international no, education yeah, minister, first international education minister of Malaysia, um, <coughs> what would you do differently? Uh, I think the first thing I would do is to actually get on the ground and see the situation in the universities, because mm. as as of right now, I feel like what the policy they implied is a blanket policy. So it doesn't matter what course you're taking, you have to follow their SOP. Mm. And like other blanket policies, it, there's positives and negatives. The negatives are courses that has practicals like medical or for, for our course, we have laboratory. We couldn't actually experience the firsthand, firsthand experience of how to actually build a circuit. Mm. One day when we're going to start working, we're not going to be able to simulate it on our <laughs> software and tell our employer, oh, this is how I did it. Someone else <laughs> has to do it physically. <laughs> because because yeah. I had online classes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I had online classes. Yeah. And secondly, I feel like they should give discounts to the students due to online learning. Yeah. The amount of tuition fees we're paying right now is also for the facilities that we use. Yeah. So yes. why am I paying full fees for providing my own internet and providing my own everything? Right, right, right. That's true. So if I were... Public, because it's true, but that's a dorm. I'm pretty sure he pays extra for the dorm. Yeah, yeah I pay extra for my Does dorm. He? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is so like a... Uh, a question specifically for Edwin. How is Indonesia handling, like how is the education in Indonesia handling the COVID-19 pandemic in comparison to Malaysia? Like are, are schools starting? Uh, is everyone doing online learning? Um, I'm not taking university in Indonesia, so I'm afraid I can't answer that. <laughs> but I could try to bring on a friend if you'd like oh. him to answer that for you. Future guests, I see. <laughs> Let's go. International guests, yeah? <clears throat> okay, so the next question I'm going to ask is, uh, I think this is an obvious answer. I'm just going to ask it anyway. Is online learning as effective 
as uh, learning physically in classes. So let's start with Edwin for this. So I feel like online learning is there's uh, there's plus and minus about online learning compared to physical classes. For online learning, if I don't understand the subject that she's teaching at the moment or he's teaching at the moment, I could open another split screen with another website that could mm. explain to me the topic better. Mm. But there are also cons such as since it's online learning, the teacher just reads off the slides as if it were to be a book. So instead of actually teaching us the concepts that are in the slides, they're just reading the slides, which is two entirely different things. Mm. But with physical face-to-face -face learning, if I don't understand something, I could actually go up to the teacher and ask them about, oh, what, what did you mean about this theory or that theory or this formula yeah, or that yeah. formula? That's right. So. Uh, understandable. Okay. Uh, G, what do you yeah. think? Um, what was the question again? Um, <laughs> Is online <laughs> learning as effective as physical classes? Simple answer, no. It's not, it's not <laughs> as effective. Um, thing like Edwin said, right? Uh, when we go to physical classes, when we don't understand something, we can straight away ask, ask the lecturers. Like I said just now, when we email them or we uh, message them, they take some time to actually reply. Um, <clears throat> And we understand that they are busy and all that, but mm. I think if it was physical class, it would be better because we have we'll have like like a direct understanding, you know, an easier way to approach the lecturers. And I think that's it. Yeah. All right, I understand. Abidash. So on the topic of effectiveness on of online learning, right? I would say, I would go for the route of it's not effective 100%. I think that it is uh, situational. <coughs> In a sense mm. that there are some, uh, there are some stances, uh, sorry, there are some instances where I feel that, you know, online learning is uh, very good in a sense that the uh, information is readily available. It's more about how can we disseminate information easier because we are taking engineering, whatever courses that we are learning is readily available online. We have sites like, you know, check and you know, all that. They've already like debunked every single question in our textbooks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> effectiveness of learning, yes. But something that online learning has done to us is given us a lot of freedom. In, in the sense that we have freedom to, you know, do whatever we want whatever time we want and uh, something that I find myself fully doing is I do not actually watch back the, some of the replay lectures that our lecturers have actually taken mm. so it sometimes just goes under the under the carpet and like you know just stuff under the carpet and I don't actually uh, go back and refer to it even though there is uh, on, uh, information available online but yeah because of that flexibility and because of that freedom in a sense that like Okay, another thing, like, you know, exams, right? I'm pretty sure a lot of us here, while, while you know, you know, while, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, answering our questions, mm. we have the flexibility to, hey, you know, hit up your friend, hey, you know, do you know how to do this question? Like, you know how to do this question? Like, mm. uh, I think a few days ago, we had the lab test, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, something that was running through my mind was, do I want to do this 100%, uh, how do, how do like what, what, what is it for? like yeah hundred percent want to do it by yourself or do you want to like you know search online ask your friends and all that because yeah. uh I can easily use a split screen and search information right next to the thing even though I'm open my camera yeah and yeah, the lecturer right. wouldn't actually know anything um uh to copy sorry listeners there was a small technical issue and we're finally back to our podcast. So, the last question for today's episode is, what do you think is the future of learning? So, let's give this heavy topic to Avinash. <laughs> okay, so, um, in the sense of the future of learning, right? Mm. Um, it, I mean, 
okay, to actually tackle it from a COVID-19 perspective, because the, uh, the spectrum is, to be very honest, very broad, in a sense that uh, you can, we can also tackle the question, like, do you think whatever we learn will be relevant? But we are not talking about that. So to make the, to like, you know, uh, focus, add more focus into this topic, I would be we'll focus more on, you know, the online learning and, you know, how future, how our future will revolve. I'm pretty sure after, uh, uh, like, a very tough situation, a lot of us have, um, like, a lot of us have faced difficulty. Only, not only us, but also think about other people. Like, the, previously I mentioned, like, my friend in Sabah and all that, right? And uh, some of the rural areas and all that. I would actually say it's a nation's wake-up call to actually let's move forward and upgrade the technology to make sure like you know entire nation has proper yeah. connectivity that's number one yeah. because the reason why we are suffering so much is because we were never prepared in the first place for this mm. pandemic in the sense that everything that we do because everything that we do has drastically changed and the most powerful thing that is able to connect us is the internet and the mm. reason why we are even having we are able to have this uh, podcast conversation among the four of us is because all of us have a pretty decent internet connection. Yeah. And that's the only reason we are actually able to converse and you know have these virtual mama talks and all that. So number one, you know, straight down to it, it's that it's a wake up call for a lot of us that we are not prepared. And if another pandemic were to happen because of globalization. One of the reasons why COVID-19 spread very fast is because of uh, international travel and all that. So, mm. because of that, uh, we need to be more prepared. Like, not, uh, not only in the education sector, but uh, in a general, in a lot of other sectors, we also need to be prepared. But in the education sector, we also we strongly need to work together with the telecommunication sector to actually up, like, have to uplift our internet. Because yeah. global uh, our, our global nation... There are some places I'm pretty sure we still do get what two G connections. Yeah, that's right. And there are there are people who are already progressing to five G. So as a nation, if we move from if everything is already three G, then we can move to four G and eventually come up and uh, be on par with other nations five G. Mm. So that's, right. that's that's I would say that is point number one. That's how our future looks. We there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. Another sense, I'm pretty sure a lot of students have already. I've, I think they already know that, and they've already learned the power of the internet. That you can learn literally anything that you want on the internet. But it comes down to topic. If you're doing some weird course, like you know what, uh, not weird la, like uh, a course that is not that well established. Yeah. Not, I would. I don't want to put it as not well established. Like it's the the course. Is the, the topics that the course covers is not widely available on the internet. It's there. Yeah, that's but right. It's still that's very, right. It's, the, the information is all over the place. Yeah. Like, um, uh, for example, if you're doing, you know, teaching and all that, right? Yeah. So, um, in the sense that majority of people would have already known that we can learn a lot of things online. But there are still some things that we need to attend uh, to do it physically and all that. But this, we can actually change the way that we do things, lah. Like... We can send in, you know, like lab kits to the house. Mm. That would be cool. Uh, so there is a lot of different things that things can be done. But generally, it's a wake-up call for the entire nation. All right. Good point, Avi. Good point. So moving on to Edwin. What do you think is the future of learning or education? So I think the future of learning is more lockdowns. now. just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like the future of education is... What it should be, at least, is physical classes. The <coughs> physical classes should be classes that are like laboratory where you are hands-on, practical mm. experience. Mm. I feel like those classes should be mandatory as physical classes, as simulations cannot justify how it's supposed to be done in real life. Yes. But for other, cor- other classes like analog electronics or theoretical classes... <laughs> theoretical class, yeah. I I think they should be online because there's absolutely no difference for me to attend class in person as me attending classes online. But I still think that exams should be face to face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As it's probably more fair to all of us. Yeah, and to the lecturers very as well. True, that's true. true. That's true. All right. So. All right, 
G as future education minister of Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> what is the future of learning? Okay, so I think the future of learning is that we are moving towards uh, fully digital or fully online right now. Oh. Uh, but only like like Edwin said, only for theoretical classes and not uh, like practical. practical. Oh, practical oh, theory. classes, I don't think it's a good idea like, ever, ever. to be online. <laughs> because we Cannot be considered. What a description. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Never, because it's not a good idea for you to actually, okay, let's just give an example, like our lab, right? It's not actually a good idea for us just to run simulations. But then when, <clears throat> when we actually start working and we are actually in the field, we can't just run simulations and tell, oh, this is how things work. We are supposed to be hands-on. We're supposed to show it how it works, how we are yeah, connecting yeah. it and all that. So we are supposed to show how we do it. And I don't think we learn much through simulation. So practical sessions are still um, required to be physical. But the rest, I think, like the theoretical, like uh, analog electronics and uh, the rest of the theoretical subjects can be online. Mm. Uh, and I think from this uh, pandemic, we um, for the future of our education is that we actually need to up our uh, internet connection game in our country. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm not sure if you all uh, heard the news about the girl uh, who went uh, climb the, the tree. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, of yeah the one in Sabah. Yeah. It took the girl, girl's action to go viral for them yes. to actually fix the connection issue in, her, in the right. village. That's right. So that shows that we are actually uh, not fully ready for uh, digitalized uh, classes. So mm. I think that's like how we, like how we said, it's a wake up call for our country to actually uh, up their yeah, interconnection game mm. for the future of our education. So I think that's uh, how our future looks for now. All right, good, good talk. That was really good talk. Um, I think if I was to conclude, it would be just online learning. A lot of pros, a lot of cons, but I think it's a struggle for everyone, student and lecturer-wise, on how to handle this change in how we how we learn, how we study, and yeah. What uh, for the last question? What you guys said was right. Since we are moving into a more advanced technological era, it is. This is like a wake up call for Malaysia to just uh, provide better internet internet connection like nationwide, especially in East Malaysia, Sarawak and Sabah. <clears throat> so I feel like I feel like we had really good talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good hearing all everyone's opinions about it. And I hope our listeners uh, can relate and also if you have any opinions about this topic or if you feel like you want a guest on this podcast in the next episode or the next few weeks then just like leave a comment below or you can hit g up in his dms because he's still single even though he's not blonde <laughs> <laughs> so this is your host for today signing out this is the tetare show goodbye Bye.